So today we have a feeder rim. It's about, I don't know, two or three inches high. And that's going to be used to make space for this big hunk of fondant. And if you see right here, once you put this feeder rim over the top bars, it's, there's room for the uh, that fondant. And this fondant looks kind of funny. It's in black and white, it's, uh, I realize now I should have shot this in color, but uh, this is the bottom of the fondant patty. And there's a little bit of powder in there. It's a um, pollen supplement. And I sprayed it down with a bit of water just to get it to stick a bit. And I probably should just let that you know, dry up a little bit so it just sort of embeds in with the uh, with the fondant. But that's okay. I don't think it's a big deal. But there's the other side. There's the gooey side with the stuff. And uh, we're going to be quick here today. I have um, no gloves. I'm wearing a black winter jacket. And I don't have smoke, but I have warm misted water. And the deal is, I'm just going to lift the top off of this. Um, and then lift up the, uh, the inner cover, slip that in, uh, the, the rim over it, put, drop that over it, and then put it all back together. Now, I suspect that the bees are, th this is a small colony, uh, they went into winter as a small colony, they don't have a lot of uh, food, so I know they're running low on food. And so I'm going to give them this fondant, that's a nice hunk of sugar to keep them alive. And um, the pollen supplement is... Uh, I don't like to give them uh, pollen early in the winter, like some people do, because I've had that backfire on me more than once where the bees get full of solids from eating pollen supplement throughout the winter, and then they can't get out for cleansing flights, and they end up pooping inside the hive, and it makes a mess, and the bees get sick, and they die. So, uh, but it's near the end of March now, and uh, it doesn't hurt. I think we're, we're, we're past the uh, the cold spells, I hope. and. Uh, so really, I think what, what I'd like to do is actually get a whole bunch of uh, pollen on these hives, get actual pollen patties on them. But right now, I'm just going to start off with this just to kickstart them, see, see how they react to that. And, uh, and then if, once they start eating that pollen um, and, and they, if they start producing some royal jelly, hopefully it'll help kickstart the brood rearing. Just a little bit early, uh, not not too early though, because really, really I probably should have done this uh, a couple weeks ago. But it was just so cold, I just didn't feel comfortable with the weather forecast. So we're gonna give it a go. This isn't the greatest shot, but that's the way it goes. This could totally backfire. Um, let's just see what happens. All right, this is the uh, a, a hive pillow. the ventilation rim. There's a few bee bits here, but this isn't uh, what it looks like. To me, that would look like uh, shrews getting in and eating them, but it's not. Um, so, really, I didn't even want to tip that. I, I want to leave that hive pillow right there because it's right over the inner cover hole, and I should have had a mesh over the inner cover hole, and I don't, so they're just going to be sticking to that. So, let's see. And I'm in very deep snow right now. I hope, hopefully it won't, that won't be a factor. It's pretty warm and windless today, so I figured this is a good time to do it. And with any luck, I'll be able to do this in less than a minute. Oh crap. There we go. This is going to be tricky. Alright, I'm just going to put this on first actually. Push the bees aside. Here we go. Here comes the, the rim. It's going to be tricky. Uh, very tricky. But I did it. It's happening. Here we go. So we got a bunch of bees stuck to that inner cover. But there we go. And then they're not they're not bad. But they're definitely clustering up top. And I'm not entirely sure that they're going to run out of honey. But I don't want to risk it. And that's it. This is, I think I got it. And there is a few bees 
uh, around that inner cover. And I'm just going to put this burlap pillow full of wood chips and straw on top of it. And then I'm going to put this back on top. And this is a basically a some would call it a, a moisture quilt. Some call it a, similar to a Vivaldi box or, or vent or whatever they want to call it. Everybody comes up with a fancy name for everything these days. It's also just a quilt box, same thing. It absorbs excess moisture, but I think these these hives have turned out, or this this hive has turned out to be quite uh, um, quite dry. But uh, hopefully, they've got a queen in there who's you know laying eggs and uh, getting uh, the next generation of brood ready for foraging and all that good stuff. I think we're done. Now you can see here, I might need to put some tape along the edges here, because there is a bit of a crack there. But uh, I'm gonna let it sit for about an hour or so and I'll come back. I'll let the bee settle down and, uh, yeah. and, then, and then give that a little tape, just to tape up any drafts. And that's it. So that was quick. I don't know what the timer was on that, but uh, <clears throat> so it was about less than a minute. Didn't really disturb the bees. And, uh, and at this time of the year too, unless it's like severe cold weather for the next month, um, a little thing like that I don't think bothers them too much. They're, they're already breaking cluster. It's already fairly warm today. You can see they weren't clustered. They're just sort of all broken up all over the place. I wish the snow would melt. We're going to get a lot of rain apparently this uh, this weekend, and hopefully it'll wash away this snow. Um, it'd be nice to be able to access my hives without putting snowshoes on. I'd like to do this to all of my hives. Well, some of them anyway. And, uh, I've got one over there that I'd like to harvest some honey from, and maybe harvest some honey from this hive too, because I didn't I didn't steal honey from most of my hives uh, last fall. I just left them their own honey and I figured, okay, let's steal some honey in the spring instead. So uh, once I know they're over the hump and they don't need whatever honey's left in the hive, I, may, I might do a, a spring harvest, but that probably won't be until May at the earliest. Anyway, so that's it, beekeeping done. So here's a bit of a feces in the snow and I'm gonna scoop it up. I'm going to melt that down and uh, maybe look at it under a microscope. Maybe we'll see something. I did see these little bits of bees uh, over the um, high pillow there, but I, I think that was from me uh, doing something that actually broke some bees up a little while ago. But it is possible that shrews have gotten into the hive because I don't put I used to put quarter inch mesh over the top of the hives, on the top entrance too, but I, just, I stopped doing that because uh, it was just a little bit too much. But the first time I had shrews in my hives, it was similar to this. It was a, even more snow than this, but the snow was like on level with the entrance here and the, bee, and the shrews could just jump off the snow and into the hives and I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But although I had uh, half inch mesh too, so they probably just went through their half inch mesh. So in any case, they could be, there could have been, there might be shrews, some shrew action happening down there. I, I'd hope not. I don't think so. But uh, um, if I did see a shrew, I'd just tear, tear the hive apart and, and uh, kill the shrew, or get rid of the shrew and then rebuild the hive in the winter, which I've done. And that's the, the pollen supplement that I sprinkled in on that uh, fondant. Mm -hmm.